As an interesting analogy, what's going on at the level of brain plasticity, we tend to think that, let's say, a dog's brain is pre-wired to drive a dog's body. But one of the examples that I talked about in my book, Live Wired, was this dog who was born without front legs. And yeah. so she just walks bipedally and she moves all around and uh, gets by that way. Why? Because she needed to get to her, you know, her dog bowl and her water and other dogs and so on. And so she just figured it out. It turns out it's not that hard for a dog to walk on back legs. And the question is, could all dogs walk on their back legs? Presumably, but they don't have the proper motivation uh, to do so. But the point is that the, the dog's body is very flexible. It meets the goals of the world. Another analogy is the world's best archer, as in he's got the world record for the longest accurate shot in archery, uh, is a guy named Matt Stutzman, who happens to have no arms. Uh, and he got interested in archery and figured out how to pull the bow with his legs. And so he shoots with his legs and uh, became a great archer that way. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. 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 The plasticity is, is incredible. And, you know, the, the earlier, the earliest example that I know of, of, the, of this hind leg thing is, is uh, Slipper's Goat, which was this, I think it was in the 40s. This guy, uh, Slipper, um, published a study of a goat who, again, born without four legs, learned to walk on its hind legs. When they dissected the goat, they found out that a lot of the uh, adjustments that you need for bipedal locomotion, right? So things about the hips, the, you know, the, the spine, all that kind of stuff we're all there, right? As opposed to what you normally think of for, for the evolution of modern humans is, you know, how, however many, many hundreds of thousands of years you need for that. And this is what's really interesting about this plasticity is that you can project it into other spaces. So as you pointed out, you know, can a dog brain run a, an upright body, right? Now look at, at individual cells, can the same genome run a completely different anatomy and set of behaviors? And this is what we've, this, I mean, other people have shown other, other examples of this, but for example, in our lab, Xenobots, Anthrobots, right? These these living constructs that have a completely different body than than what they normally do. They have a different behavioral repertoire, no genetic change, same gene regulatory networks are running a completely different body. 